of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Hey guys, Julian here. Got another video for you. Boy, this is an interesting topic, isn't it? I just delivering God's word. Hallelujah. Father God, I ask that you take this video to those that need to see it. I thank you, Father. I give you all honor and glory for all dreams, visions, words of knowledge, and for your word, your word, Lord, that we're going to dig into today. Thank you, Lord. God, I take the double-edged sword and I slice out every flickering tongue that would come against the brethren. <sighs> slice off every head of the serpent. Kick them back to the pit where they belong. In precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. So guys, I was praying the other day, Lord, what would you like me to speak about, right? He told me to speak about some of the old topics that I had, the, the thing. He said, recirculate them, right? I, I read that. I read that to you guys. So recirculate them. So I said, okay, Lord, what would you like me to speak about? And um, I, I, I meant, I said, would you like me to speak again about the Holy Spirit? And he gave me this message. Hallelujah, right? Woo! Praise God. You're an awesome, Lord. All right, I received this message on 616. So I've had it for a few days because I've been, you know, just praying about it. And, and, and I already I already know in my heart what the truth is, but I just wanted to make sure I had all my ducks in a row, so to speak, so that I could give you evidence. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to give you scriptural evidence about the true identity of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, I want to ask you to to, to not make any rash decisions. Okay, because here's kind of what God is doing. You know where Gideon, he told Gideon to lead the 10,000 down to the river. And based on how they lap it up, then they're going to, then the 300 are going to stay. Okay, guys, this is what God is doing. He's, he's in a sense, he's testing you. Many of you are being tested on your faith, on your beliefs, on, on your ability to have an open mind to the truth okay and and you know or or will you be like many of the, the humans throughout history that has denied the holy spirit that has pushed the holy spirit away all right here's the message i received on june 16th my son this is prophetic insight about the young and youthful and the holy spirit the Holy Spirit is your spiritual mother. The young generation will have the Holy Spirit and they are not coming in the recognized way. For the man of the flesh, your fame will be shining brightly in the wilderness and place of testing. You had a history of one being religious, but you are filled with the Holy Spirit and clothed in God's glory. You will soon be on holy ground in my presence with your natural mother. Wow. You are being tested and will be judged from when you were a man of the flesh. You will be on holy ground in my presence for judgment. The race of faith has been your heart and your heart is the birthplace of faith. And the sword comes from the heart. My son, you're not coming into ministry the recognized way. And that's the end of the message. So I wanted to point out just three things real quick. The This is, guys, these are not my words. These are words from Father. Father, the Holy Spirit is your spiritual mother. Now, I knew that already. I've known it for three years. And I'm going to tell you why that all happened. Second thing, he says, um, you were one who used to be religious, okay? But you are now filled with the Holy Spirit and clothed in God's glory. You might say, well, what's, the, what's God's glory? That could be the many dreams and visions that, he, that I'm giving, that I've been giving. Also, he says, you are going to be in my presence with your natural mother. Woo! Oh, boy. That, she might be a test. <laughs> she might be a witness. 
I was probably the black sheep of my family. I, my mom had seven kids and I was the middleman. And so, wow. But listen, don't turn it off, guys. I'm going to go into details on what the Lord has showed me on scriptures about how the Holy Spirit is our spiritual mother. Okay. Now, I want to tell a real quick, um, real quick testimony on when we first got on the road. Um, I was not convinced that the Holy Spirit was, was actually, I thought the Holy Spirit was a man. And so the Lord, one of the first dreams he gave me was that a woman coming to me and talking to me and, and teaching me. And, and she's very professional and she's, um, she's slim. She's Jewish. Um, she's Jewish looking, at least in all the dreams and visions that I've had of her. Um, so amazingly, so, so I started to develop, okay, maybe everything I've read in the Bible is not true. And how could that be? God, is this your word? But he, he showed me, and I'm going to show you today. We're going to go through it. How, how the Jewish men was trying to, you know, trying to hide truths. And they still do it today. They still do it today. They're hiding the truth about Jesus being the Messiah. They've actually taken God's word out of the Torah. And that's the truth. That is the truth. Okay. So we were on the road and I had a vision of this white house and it was a farm. And the Lord said, go there and deliver a message. So I had a message. The Lord gave me a message and I took the message with the team and we went and knocked on the door and the man came. Well, after, after knocking, knocking, the team kept saying, no one's here. And I'm like, well, there's smoke coming out of the chimney. So that tells me that someone's probably in there. So it was an old farmhouse built in the 19, early 1900s, like 1901 or some, maybe even 1899, down on the on the river. And so we went there. I went there because God said, go there. Okay, we did. We went there. And I kind of told this story before, but I know I have a lot of new subscribers. We went there. And finally, someone, after knocking and knocking, probably for 15 minutes, someone finally came to the window and said, what do you want? I said, and I told him, I said, I've got a message from God for you, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I wonder, you know, I wonder if I heard that do, 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 playing in the background, right? But, and I'm sure he thought, oh, oh boy. Okay, great. Got a, I got a cuckoo guy here. Got a message from God. Sure. Well, he says, what's the message? I said, well, if you open the door, I can, I can share it with you. I need to read it to you. That's my directive. That's what I've been told to do. Read the message to you. So he opens the door and he's an older gentleman, probably in his early seventies. And I, I'm like, so I read the message to him and it was specifically talking about him, who he was and that, and it was even saying that he would shelter us, meaning allow us to move on to his property. And he goes, okay, come on in. <laughs> so we come in and Long story short, the whole team is sitting around the table at some point in the later in the day, and we're talking about God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about some things. You know, Michael on our team, he, he you know, he blurts out that we're angels. <laughs> oh, boy, did that throw some, you know, some red flags up for him. Um, but he definitely said he did not agree that the, the Holy Spirit was a woman. That was our spiritual mother. And so we... I, I told him, I said, God's going to give you a, a dream tonight and it's going to, and it's going to tell you the truth. The dream's going to tell you the truth. So that night, my brothers and sisters, thank you, father, <laughs> for coming through. Cause I was speaking out in confidence that he gave the man a dream. Oh, oh, by the way, the man said, yeah, move on to my property, you know, and, and I've talked about this before. He had a church in the back of his house that seated about 80 to hundred people. And so I, you know, wow, you know, God was doing some crazy things with us and he has been. So remember, I've told you that crazy scripture that, you know, um, the spirit, the, the, the man of the, the man of the spirit um, is being taught by the Holy Spirit. And, and we're doing things leading by the spirit. And it's not it's not common sense to the natural man, the man that is in the flesh. So anyway, we the next morning he comes out, knocks on the on the on the bus. He goes, hey, hey. I'm like, yeah. He goes, I had a dream. I'm like, okay. He goes, I don't dream very often, but I had a dream. 
I'm like, okay. So let's go write it down. So we went and wrote it down. Basically, in his dream was the whole team was sitting around his table, communing. And there was a woman that was circling and walking around the table the whole time that we were communing. She kept walking around, observing, looked like this, you know, walking around. And what was cool, okay, what was very cool, he was an artist. He drew a picture of the woman. Wow. Wow. That was so exciting. Why? Because it was the same woman that has been in all my dreams and visions. And so it was amazing. I'm just telling you, it was amazing, guys. So I want to take you now through scripture. Okay. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up so you can actually follow along with me in the scripture. Okay. So isn't this awesome? This is awesome, guys. And so hang in there with me. All right, guys. So I just read you this message um, from the from the Lord, from Father, about how the Holy Spirit is your natural, natural your spiritual mother. I'm sorry, your spiritual mother. That's in the second line there. Now, let's, um, oops, see if I can zoom down here. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. And... When reading the word of God, I want to encourage you to read in the spirit, okay? Read in the spirit. What does that mean? Okay, that means to try to understand and hear the deeper meanings of God's word, okay? That, that is what I've learned in the last three years, being on the road in this ministry and reading God's word every day, praying to Father every day and worshiping to Father every day. We do it every day and fasting. And just clo getting close to Father, getting close to Jesus, right? That's what the Lord has taught me. So, but the Lord shared with me every jot and every tittle is God's word. And it confirms that each word of God can stand alone. Each single word. I, mean, I hear many times you're taking the word of God out of context. Jesus came to me and said, every jot and every tittle can stand alone. What does that mean? That means that every single word, every letter of every word can stand alone. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, he says, For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle would by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Why do I put that in there? Because guys, you need to understand that God's word is God's word. And it is strong. And it is true. And there has been some, there has been some, some corruption with God's word. In Jeremiah chapter eight, look, check this out. This is the Lord pointed all this out to me, guys. Verses eight and nine says, how can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Ha, huh, get it? What wisdom do they have? I'm going to show you something about wisdom. So, so hang on to that. Wisdom, the word wisdom. Say wisdom, wisdom. Say it with me, wisdom, wisdom, okay? Now, we see in the Bible that knowledge will increase over time. We are in the end times, guys. We are at the end of time. We are in the last, we're in the great consummate of time. I've talked about that many times. Knowledge will increase. And we see that in Isaiah 11, 9, Daniel 12, 4, and Revelation 22, 10. Now, I want to take you to the foundation, the building blocks of this, of who wisdom is. Okay. Isaiah 11, 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Mm, see that? Rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Rest upon him. Think about the dove. The dove resting upon him. When John the Baptist, he saw there, you know, behold, the Lamb of God. And when he baptized him in the water, in the Jordan, the, the dove came down, 
okay? The dove came down and the Holy Spirit's telling me, don't forget to tell them that the dove in the in Genesis, in chapter 8, when Noah was working with the dove, it was a she. It was a she. That was the Holy Spirit going out about and coming, going forth and coming back, working with Noah as well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Listen, listen. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. And then in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens. Guys, wisdom, wisdom has been around with God. In, in, in mystery, we see in mystery in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And wisdom helped God found the earth and the heavens. So wisdom has been with God since the beginning. Do you understand that? Do you see that? Now, in Proverbs chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 8, it talks greatly about wisdom. Okay? It talks greatly about wisdom. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. It's your spiritual mother. Wisdom is your spiritual mother. I'm going to keep going. Don't hang up on me, okay? Let's go. Here we go. In the Hebrew Greek translations, there's been a mistake. And the Lord showed me this. The he, she, and it could not be translated properly from the Greek. So this caused translators to list the Holy Spirit as a he. Because he, she, and it was all the same to the translators. There are three places where we can see this confusion in translation of him, her, and it. The story of Christ being arrested and the woman confronting Peter while warming around the fire in Mark 14. But she is called a man in Matthew chapter 26, verse 69 through 79, 5. Okay, and there's the chapters, uh, and there's the books. It says Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And there's the references. I'll put all these scriptures in the description box. Please take it all to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit for confirmation. Hallelujah. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, um, she will confirm it. Guys, I used to, till I was 55 years old, I believed that the Holy Spirit was a man until God showed me and said, nope, 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 nope. We got a problem here. And, oh boy, in another dream I had, and I'll just share this real brief before we go on. I said, Lord, would you show me another picture of the Holy Spirit and just, you know, oh, just let me see her again. Or let me let me see her in a dream, in the spirit, moving in the spirit, right, in a vision. I see her again. <laughs> he comes back, but he shows me the Holy Spirit. You know, I will say the Holy Spirit as my spiritual mother is I'm proud to have her as my spiritual mother. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Numbers chapter 22, we also see where the donkey is female, yet Peter says in 2 Peter that the donkey had a voice of a man. Other translations say it had a human voice, but Peter says a, a voice of a man. So, you know, there's the he, she, it. There's some translation issues going on there. Lastly, in John chapter 15, verse 26 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from, from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, says he will testify me. It should really say she will testify me based on the word of God, the, the message that I was given. And I believe me, guys, these I've tested the Spirit on everything the Lord gives me. I test the Spirit on everything. In Genesis chapter 8, Speaks of the female dove. In Matthew chapter 3, the dove comes down upon Jesus, right? And I just read that to you, how the spirit of wisdom will come upon him. In Genesis chapter 2, now let's get into a little bit more, okay? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, pointing to the fact that Adam left his father and mother. Here it is. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Okay, so there it is. It's plain as day. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother. Who is the first man? 
That's Adam. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's Adam. Adam was the first man. He left his spiritual father and mother, father being father, father God, and his mother being, being the Holy Spirit or um, wisdom. In Ephesians 5, 31, 32, we see God the Father, Holy Spirit, the mother and Jesus separated from them for the bride of Christ. Here it is. Here's the scripture. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. See, he's basically quoting what's in Genesis. And the two shall become one flesh. Listen to this. This is a great mystery. <laughs> but I'm speaking to you about Christ and the church. Okay. What is the great mystery? The mystery is that the Holy Spirit is the spiritual mother of all of us, guys, all of us. All right. In Matthew chapter 11, in Luke 7, 35, but wisdom, the Holy Spirit is justified by her children. Here in Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, the son of man come eating and drinking. They say, look, a glutton, the wine bibber, a, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. What could that mean? For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, said he has a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a glutton of wine bibber, a friend, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by all her children. What are we talking about here? What does that mean? But wisdom is justified. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit. Everyone who has the Holy Spirit will be will speak the Holy Spirit, and she'll be justified by their children, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Like Stephen, another example, Acts chapter 7, the whole book, I mean the whole chapter of Acts chapter 7. Check it out. Go read it yourself. And 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 41 says, Now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, all that he did and his wisdom, are, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? Okay, this scripture ties to the Holy Scriptures, to the wisdom of Solomon, which refers to more in depth of the Holy Spirit's identity. The wisdom of Solomon is apocrypha for the King James Version. But if you look at the Old Testament in this Septuagint, okay, that, my brothers, Septuagint, I'm sorry, Septuagint, that is the Greek Old Testament, okay, the Greek Old Testament. And um that has the book of solomon or or the uh the acts of solomon in it okay now the wisdom of solomon or it's also called the acts of solomon is one of the seven se se sapiential poetic or wisdom books in, in the septuagint okay in the greek old testament the others are being psalm proverbs ecclesiastes and song of songs song of solomon and job as well so as you can see, um, it should have been included. But when they wrote the King James Version and, and decided what books are going to be in the King James Version, also even went back to Constantinople when he kind of got a committee together and said, okay, what books do we want to put in here? They left it out. They left it out. Why? I don't know. For whatever reason. But it was left out. And see, man has free will, guys. Man has free will. God, that's God's word. And so God has to live by his word. So I, many times I've asked God, why? How did this happen, Lord? How did this happen? How did you allow this to happen? That this book got left out. It's so important. And he showed me that it's God, that he, he has to live by his word. He's not a liar. God is not a liar. And he has to um, allow men, man to have, um, free will right so the man the men that put the books of the bibles together back in the day constantinople's time he decided that it wasn't important so but check this out in the book of wisdom okay you can look for this online uh, you can download it and you can grab it out there online it's uh i what i did i searched for a pdf of the book of wisdom okay listen to this in in chapter 7 verses 11 and 12 says all good things together came to me with her and innumerable riches and in her hands and i rejoiced in all them in them all 
because wisdom goeth before them. And I knew not that she was the mother of them all or of them. So right there, uh, the scriptures declare our spiritual mother wisdom and we can make daisy chain to the truth. Okay. And Luke chapter 12, verse 12 says, Holy Spirit is our teacher. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Now, many people that teach about uh, children's courses, um, I was in the program called Married for Life, right? There's, there's, they also have a, uh, a, a program called Married with Children, I think it is. And, um, and, and what they teach is that the Holy Spirit teaches the children. This is in real life, right? Many, many Christian schools teach this, that that uh, the mother of the family, the mom, the woman of the family, she's to teach the children when they're early, at their early ages. When the child gets to about 12, this is kind of along with Jewish teaching, when a child gets around 12 years old, it is to follow the guidance of the father and the things that the mother has taught and put the, the, the rules and the things that the guidelines and, and, and all the, you know, the, the truths and the principles that the, the mother has instilled in, in the child. And it's true that the, the Holy Spirit teaches us all the rules, all the, uh, the guidelines and, and, and things like that, right? All, um, all the <laughs> God's law, his word, right? And then, and then once, once we kind of grow up, mature in the faith, then sure. We, we are to continue to follow God's word. So, so then again, there's Genesis chapter eight, verses eight and nine talks about how um, that the dove was a, was a she. He, Moses took her and drew her into the ark to himself. Um, and then um, in Isaiah chapter 49, verses one through three, and this is a little bit deeper. I'll let you dig into that yourself. But guys, God bless you. I hope that you um, take this to father take it to jesus take it to the holy spirit for confirmation and uh i'm excited about this because uh I, I was excited about that word my mom's going to be there at my judgment that's that's kind of scares me a little bit but um or, or kind of concerns me because <laughs> she can really be a witness of, of the many things that i've done and probably um you know probably mistreated her or or caused a lot of grief when i was a child so god bless you guys um Love you all very much. And this is uh, Julian. I'm out. God bless you. Take care.